Well, I was gonna support the whole thing on this here Beaver screw jack I just got for $57. Uh, I'm not so sure about if I really want my entire life supported by this. So uh, maybe I'll do something smarter. What is up, everybody? It's a wonderful day. Absolutely nothing to complain about. Sorry if the fans making some noise up there. And uh, talk about a few things going on. A few things going to be going on. A couple plans we're making. A couple plans we're not making. And all that good stuff. So, I'm going to get started. Up, the old Ford. Uh, we got a Turbo Outlet 90 to plumb the intercooler. However, before that happens, need to get this radiator hose situated because you see the two are kind of existing in the same space. So, need to figure that out. This turbo outlet does clear everything, but radiator hose is an issue. I did order a radiator hose for a 7.3 IDI upper hose, and it's like nine bucks on Rock Auto. I figured I'd risk it. Worst case scenario, I can modify it, but the two are kind of each other's way. So, might have to do some finagling to make that work, but waiting on the radiator hose before I commit anything. And also need to get the intercooler attached into the core support and also need to mount the core support onto some engine mount or onto some frame mounts. You can kind of see the factory frame mount. I just need to make a bracket, modify something onto the core support so that this is held up by something other than these three little bolts back here because that's all the support in the whole front end now. And once you get everything hung on there obviously that ain't going to work you know so need to have something positive mounting that and still need to mount the rear seat still need on that still thinking i'm just going to build a box right there mount it up and then the bus is what is taking precedence right now so i picked up these leaf springs from summit they were only like 90 bucks each Supposedly early square body, four inch lift, square body Chevrolet, four inch lift. There's the number. If anybody wants to correct me, feel free. Uh, they're like 46 inches eye to eye. Probably gonna end up having to lose some leaves out of the pack to make them ride a little smoother. Not a big deal. Just take them apart and pull out some leaves and play with that a little bit. Um, but that was the best option I could find for leafs for the front. So I could start mocking things up, determine where the perch is gonna sit. Other issue, power steering pump. I originally wanted to make this so that this engine just drops out the bottom because it ain't coming out the top when it needs service or it needs whatever. Uh, but this power steering pump in the way, I don't know. We haven't figured that out yet, but I'm gonna get to that. That AC pump will be gone. Uh, going to go to electric AC, I believe. Uh, but that AC pump will not be there because it's hanging down too low and it'll just get tore up and it's also in the way of absolutely everything So anyhow leaf springs This leaf spring width I almost knocked that off and broke my toe uh, Leaf spring width is wider than these frame rails um, And the frame rails are kind of Tapered So I'm actually thinking that I'm going to take my tube there and sister it just on the outside here of the frame rail and I mean as you can see most of this stuff is cooked and needs replaced anyhow so if I do that then I'll have something positive and I need to measure up here and make sure the tire will clear at a full lock but then I'll have something positive mounted and keeping the whole thing square when I start cutting more apart so if I start cutting apart as it is now this thing's going to turn into spaghetti noodle and be real floppy with as rusty as it is so need to measure up more and do that but i think i can just go right down this rail and then cut loose that rail and have something that works hopefully so more measuring to do on that need to mount up this tire well set this tire up on place and look at backspacing uh, the 285 tire that i also bought is coming tomorrow so i can use it and decide what's going to work out best I'm still leaning towards using the 285, I believe, just because it's gonna fit 
way better and I won't have to run as much backspace on the wheel to clear the spring at full lock. So that's kind of a brief overview of what's up. And I think I'm gonna start by measuring more and then mocking up some frame rails underneath here, like I said, to support everything. And that I can, once that's done, I can cut the whole floor out of this bus and restart from scratch with a new floor. So that's where I'm gonna hit. So this is what I'm talking about. This is at full lock. That's set by the stopper at least. And tire's not inflated, which will make a difference, but currently it's got a little space. Now I can set that bump stop or that steering stop out further, but I would like to have as good a steering angle as possible because, you know, like parking and whatnot and driving, things like that. So that is, I'm walking around circles, my bad. So that is a consideration. This is set up basically centered, the wheel is. Uh, so like four inches of backspacing, which is, you know, like four and a half, right? It's pretty common on an aftermarket wheel. I don't know what my options are going to be ET backspacing wise on wheels. I know the wheel that I want to run has a bunch of backspacing and would not work in this case. So, I mean, they could be recentered, but budget comes into mind. So that's something to think about. But as it sits, 35 is doable, just not the best thing in the world. But still kind of want to run them because they're freaking cool. All right, well, a slight flaw in my frame plan here. Because back here, I'm measuring from the inside, but if you figure on center, Harbor Freight tape measures coming in clutch. If you measure on center here, we're at about 30 inches on center at the back. And at the front, like I said, they make a little kick in. You can really see they taper up. And we're about 28 inches to the center up here. So tapers in two inches. I can be on the outside of this rail and be the right width for my leaf springs. However, if I remove all of this stamp steel here, then I have a place to mount my engine further out and I get more space to fit my engine in and out of here as well. So I think what I'm going to do, which debating on if it's smart or not, is just chop that whole rail out to here, replace it, uh, and find something to weld it to again up underneath there. That's the biggest issue is finding some structure to attach it to. So I don't know if the move is gonna be weld that in, build out this structure and attach it to the body up here again and do one side at a time, which seems like probably the wisest thing to do. Uh, and then cut out the floor. I don't really know. So this floor has gotta go. I mean, this is toast. This is all, all rotted out. These things aren't doing much, so. Probably just build a whole new floor structure out of some tubing, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. This is the beauty of building cars without a real plan, folks. But, you know, that's how it works here. No, uh, no uh, flashy, glitzy stuff for us. So I went ahead, and before I cut anything any further, mounted it up on my frame cart and leveled everything up so it is now perfectly level, the cart is at least, well, the frame is, the cart is both, I guess. Uh, so everything is level. And then I'm just starting at the back with these rails I installed. I'm gonna square them because they have moved a little bit with the bus getting moved around and broke my spot weld and stuff there. So I'm gonna square them, have the jack on there. So I'm gonna start with this rail square and work off of it for the rest of the entire chassis which makes more sense than doing anything else. And then as I go, I can just tack it straight to the cart and that'll keep the body. So I've squared up the body too, even though it doesn't look like it. <laughs> it's because it's a 60 year old bus that a tree fell on. So like this rail up here, when you throw a straight edge down it, it's not square. 
So once the frame is squared up, I'm gonna start jacking and pushing and see if I can't get the bus body back into one piece, kind of. I mean, it is what it is. It's full of Bondo. It's had a tree fall on it. So there's a reason why I cut it up. So set up my laser in here to determine the center all the way down. This line is irrelevant right now. When I get squaring the body up, I'll set the laser all the way down the sides and then use it. But right now I'm just interested in locating center all the way down the middle so I have reference to measure off of to set my frame rails. And then I can go from there. I do need to, probably I'm gonna weld onto this cross beam and come up and then tack in to here on either side. Take off this vinyl and tack into here on either side with a crossbar just to support the front of the bus and then just go ahead and hack out all the rest of that frame structure so I can just build up rails all the way and bring them out the front then. And it is sitting on the factory rail there, um, but I'm going to just go straight to the outside of it. So I'll just be able to set straight on the I-beam on the outside, sister up to it, take the weight off of that frame and then frame rail and then chop it out is the plan. So with everything squared and everything leveled, I can get started cutting the main rail here on the, on the left side and get it going. All right, so I end up putting up some structure inside the bus and welding it down up here. It's welded to the I-beam that's supporting everything and then just going up so to hold the front up, keep everything square. And then back there, I want it to the subframe that I already have down there. So that's to uh, keep everything square. I'm gonna cut this whole frame out. And back here, squared everything up. Got supports welded down to the cart and put in this cross member to keep the rear subframe all squared up. So that part is donezo. And then I've thrown in one frame rail. I need to cut out the rest of this floor now that I have supports in. And you can see I'm going to run out a kicker there and then tie into the subframe back there and just run a long piece all the way out there as a rock slider place to put a, I think I'm going to put like a tube step on there so you can stand up and put stuff on the roof or put a ladder on or whatever. But that'll give support to that whole sidewall and also give some good side impact protection if this thing gets run into. I've got a big old beefy piece of quarter wall, two by three tubing there to give a lot of protection if it gets run into. And I may actually exo cage this thing just with some tubes, maybe cut through the ceiling and put them in and do something to give us some rollover protection and some side impact protection on both sides. I've been thinking about that and also doing some frontal impact protection same way so I'm going to run that two or three all the way up here and then probably do an exterior bumper but also build some sort of crossbar across here with uprights to give some frontal impact since there's none in these babies so trying to think a couple steps ahead but yeah so I cut this tube it's in place ready to be welded and then I need to do it the same with the rear and then build this slider and then that's going to give this whole wall something to tie into and help support the bus and then go ahead and I'm going to cut this whole wheel arch out because it is all rusted and full of holes so may as well just get rid of it and rebuild this whole thing uh, decide what I'm going to do for dog legs probably just fabricate dog legs instead of spending money on them rebuild all this stuff and be able to build a floor but basically everything up here can go. Cause I mean, this is the support for the steering box and all that. I'll mount that all onto the frame rails. Um, so that'll be taken care of. Redo all of my pedals that I messed with a long time ago so that they aren't right here. Probably mount them back under the floor, figure something out with that. So lots to do, but lots of got, has gotten done and kind of have the wheels turning. Also, speaking of wheels turning, like this segue, the uh, 285 showed up, and I think that's a way better choice tire-wise and size-wise. Fits in the wheel opening so much better. I'll have plenty of room. Actually, it'll come forward a little bit, but I'll have plenty of room with that kicker. 
I uh, might still push it back just a tiny bit just to get more room in the wheel while so the bus doesn't have to sit up so high. But that's uh, the plan for all that. So, as always, thank you all for watching. We're about to hit 500 subs, probably today, hopefully. Uh, we're sitting at like 496, 497. So, appreciate it, everybody. And I will be back tomorrow. It's Friday, it's September 20th, and it's 80 degrees in Ohio, so we're gonna go jump in the pool. Well, we still can before it gets cold. But until then, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you later.